So congratulations on it finally being out. Um, how are you feeling today? Uh, I'm actually feeling a bit anxious, but also very excited. It's um, it's weird because obviously we've been sat on this album for like three or four months already, just waiting for it to go out into the world and for everyone to hear it. So we've kind of already had our time to like digest it. And now today's the final, finally the day where it's like, it's going out into the world and we just have to wait and see what everyone thinks of it. So ho- hopefully, hopefully everyone likes it as much as we do, but there's, there's no way of really knowing until the dust has settled over the last week or so, I think. Yeah. Has the feedback been good so far? Yeah, it's been really good. All the reviews have been great and all the fans love it because you know, they're obviously dedicated fans and they'll, they'll love anything we put out, but it's nice to, nice to hear that even like new people listening to the album have loved it so far as well, which is great. Yeah. Um, do you have any celebrations lined up for later today or later in the week? Uh, you know, we actually we didn't for a while. We hadn't really thought of it, but we said in the uh, group chat the other night that we're all going to go to Amy's and have a little party. Not mm. too wild, though, because we're um, off on tour supporting Mother Mother first thing tomorrow morning, so can't be going too crazy. But I think we are going to have like a nice little family meal together, which would be cute. Oh, nice. A gluten-free vegan family meal. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I mean, me, me and Amy will probably still be eating meat and... and lactose and cheese and everything but for, for, for holly and Liv, definitely yeah. um what was the process like then creating the mess we seem to make like can you pick out any high points or any low points that like stand out for you in like the entire process uh i've, I've always thought for me that like, obviously with every song and every project there's always like a sort of eureka moment where like you come across something in the studio whether it's a part or like the sound of something for me with this album it was the drums on kiss me we um me and pete he was the uh, he was the old drummer for the vaccines he was the producer on the album we were coming up with a part for the chorus and he was showing me he, we were like trying to figure it out together with like syncopated rhythms and the hi-hat and he um he came up with an idea and he showed it to me he said like he played it to me and on, on the a kit that was across the room from the kit that i was playing and tom the sound engineer could hear the kit that he was playing through the room mics on my drum kit and it sounded like massive and boomy and so when pete came back up tom was like i just heard you're playing through the room mics and harry's drums and it sounded amazing so we ended up doubling the drums in kiss me on and in the uh, in the chorus so if you listen i mean you you might not be able to make it out but we did there's two drums playing at the same time in um the chorus for kiss me and that's why it's, the drums there just sound massive that was my favorite moment yeah, recording the album because it was like wow that sound that sound it was like exciting because it was i don't think i've i've ever heard of anyone doubling up on the drum tracks in the song which is cool yeah that's really cool um would you say that kiss me then is probably like your favorite song on the record or yeah i think so yeah. i think even though it's like it, it is really poppy and we didn't really mean for it to be poppy it's just sort of whilst we were recording it it just ended up being a, a pop song which we didn't like necessarily try for but yeah, it just ended up being everyone's favourite. I think I, I, either "Kiss Me" or "I End Up Alone," which I think, I think that's going to be one where it's sort of like a slow burner. Fans will discover it the more they listen to the album and realise how much they like it. Yeah. Whereas "Kiss Me" is more like a an obvious single, like an obvious sort of pop song. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's good that you've said that though, because my next question literally is: your drumming, especially on "Meaningless Sex," "Kiss Me," and "I End Up Alone," are like standouts on the record for me. Oh, thank you. Like, thank you so much. I feel like, oh, sorry. <clears throat> I feel like um, compared to like your drumming on the EP and like the other singles, there's something really distinctive about what you're doing on this specific album, which ah, thank you. is really interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. I th- well, I think because, um, like I say, Pete, because he was a drummer and he was our producer, so he's, he spent a lot of time with me trying to get the right drum parts and the right drum sounds. And it, it, it's the same. You know, with all of us, every time we record a new song, we're not just trying to, like, capture a moment of where we're at as musicians and what we're capable of. We're always trying to push ourselves. Every time we record something new, it's like, okay, what's something I can't play? Let's spend a good hour or so figuring out how to play it, figuring out how to play this chorus, figuring out how to play this complicated beat or maybe guitar riff or bass line, whatever it is. So that way, every time we step in the studio, it's like pushing us a little bit further, which is why I think this album has meant so much to us because it's it's showed us what we're capable of as musicians as well. Yeah, it sounds like you've actually all put like a lot of hard work into this and it's like thoroughly thought out and everything. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, just like aside from like the themes and like choosing the songs, the actual recording process of getting all the parts down was definitely like a challenge. So it it took a while, but it definitely paid off. Yeah. Um, are you excited to like put like a live flair onto these songs? Because I know that you've played a few of them at like the oh, acoustic yeah. shows, but yeah, absolutely. I think it kills me to be kind. Obviously, we've been playing those at the acoustic shows but I, I don't get really get to play as much during those obviously yeah. but um i think that one live because it's a very drum oriented track so the playing that one live is definitely it's going to go off for like festivals and things and i end up alone as well i, I think sonically the sounds like in that intro it's going to sound way better live than it does on record which is going to be really exciting and are you excited as well, like, not only to play these live, but to see, like, fan reactions to, like, the songs live and what, like, different life that they're going to take on stage? Yeah, definitely. Like, I, I can already hear, like, the crowds screaming the chorus for Iron Up Alone, like, when it builds up to that first chorus. And it's like, yeah, I, th I think a, lo a lot of these songs are going to... Because our fans always, like, jump on our music really quickly like sometimes they'll start singing along before we've even released the track and we're like how the fuck do you know the lyrics <laughs> but i think now that it's all out and everyone's had an opportunity to learn the lyrics and learn the music and it's going to be amazing when they finally sing it back to us and i don't, I don't think it's going to take long for fans I, th I think even the mother mother support tomorrow i think there'll be some fans there that because we have quite a few crossover of a, a fan base i think there'll be a lot of people singing along which will be great yeah um, was there at any point in this re like recording process for the album where you felt deflated in a sense, like you felt like it wasn't going in the right direction? If so, how did you overcome it? Um, that's a good question. I don't think that's a really good question. Actually, hang on. I don't think um, there was ever any doubt. I think whenever you are approaching an album or any project, it's good to sort of obviously you want to have a vision but you should always be susceptible for change. Like, see, there's some artists that will be like, no, this is my vision, it has to be like this. The bass has to be like this, the drums have to be like this, the vocals have to be like this, this is how we're doing it. And sometimes that can yield great results, but I think you'll just enjoy it way more if you approach a project being like, this is the vision, but it's, it's going to be open to change and we'll learn new things along the way. And if something sounds like it's not going in the right direction, you can just very quickly add something new and as soon as you've added something to a song that excites you that's when you start chasing that idea down and uh pursuing it and making that song the best version of itself that it can be i'm trying to think of a song where that might have happened i think maybe here again the um i think it's the third tr yeah third track on the album when we first started recording it at no point for the first like day or two i was, I was ever like oh wow this song is going to be amazing this song's going to be amazing but it was only when we got to the end result we were like oh i, I didn't realize what this song was going to be but now that it's finished it does sound really really good yeah so that was, kind of, that was kind of a slow burner in the in terms of the creative process that's my personal favorite on the album so far oh actually. really yeah. yeah oh that's sick um so moving on to when you actually was recording the album who was you listening to for like influence because i've said to you before um the Cure influence on Would You Come To My Funeral on the drums. That's, like, a big one for me. But who was you yeah, listening yeah. to, like, when recording um, this album? I mean, we always said, when it came to, like, the production and stuff, and a, a, a big part, because obviously we have a lot of different sounds. Like, we have really dainty sa uh, songs, we have really poppy songs, we have really, like, grungy, heavy songs. So for this album, we were like, how are we going to make all of this work together? And so we decided to base a lot of the sounds, and especially the drums, uh, the sound of the drums on albums like by, uh, what's it? Pixies and, um, what are they called? Uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Like a lot, a lot of the sounds sonically, we sort of based on that. Uh, and in terms of what I was listening to at the time, I can't really really remember i'm one of those people who like yeah I'll, I'll listen to an album every now and then but i'm mostly going back to my classic playlists of like blink on 82 and pop punk and everything which i don't necessarily play like when it comes to crawlers i think a lot of what crawlers is is figuring out what works for us as musicians and figuring out what a crawlers track can sound like because obviously it sounds so different so for us it was mostly like making sure the production side side of things was locked in and that's what we do with the pixies and uh smashing pumpkins influence I think. yeah 
I know you're a big Blink fan as well, so... Yeah, massive Blink fan. <laughs> um, I'm always itching to play some pop punk, but it's never going to happen in Gorillaz. <laughs> um, so, obviously the album's out, and as we seem to make, what's the main thing that you want the fans to take away from, like, listening to this album? Um, I mean, obviously, like... The lyricism and the topics and the emotion behind a lot of the music, I think it's important. It's always going to be important for that to resonate with fans because I don't think if you want art to thrive, it needs to come from a real place. It can, you can like, yeah, you can sort of fake it, but it's never going to resonate or do as well as when it's coming from a real place. And aside from that, I just want people to realise that you you can, or especially what, what we're going to do is just keep making music that sounds good and pursuing the sound that a song requires and not being too caught up in oh the, the, you know like we got golden bridge in the same album as hit, hit it again which is two very very different songs and i, I, I want people to realize that we're not going to be afraid to do that with our music like we'll, we'll figure out ways to tie them in and make it work but we're not going to stop ourselves from creating a sound or creating a song that we know sounds good and we know is the best version of that song that it can be I feel like as well, like with you saying that, like you're just going to keep making music. I feel like with this album now being out, you're going to get so much more like acclaim and like, mm. because it is very, very good. Like, I knew it was yeah. going to be good, but like, Jesus Christ, yeah, thank, very, very yeah, good. Thank you. But, um, yeah, that, but that's, that's the thing. I, I think the only, because obviously a lot of reviewers have said it's great and given it a load of praise, which obviously we love. I, I think I'd be interested to see what, people don't like about the album like genuinely because you know we've got like a, a few like four star reviews which is obviously really flowering but I, I think the only thing i can imagine someone wouldn't like about the album is the fact that it's such an eclectic mix of sounds but like i say i want people to realize that that's not necessarily what should hold an album back i think that should be celebrated as long as it can be done tastefully and done in a way that works for the project yeah, and even though it is, like, a mix of sounds, like, it's thematically, like, structured and cohesive, I'd say, like, it all mm. sticks to, like, the same themes throughout each song. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, like, we we always said going into the album that was always going to be the biggest challenge. We, we were always going to just play what feels right, do whatever song feels right, but a lot of the thought went into how to make these songs work together, and I think we pulled off. Yeah. Um, bit of a like expanded question but how would you personally define success Oof. I, th I think success in the music industry a lot of people think success is number one album brit awards grammys and being an a-list a-list artist but I, th I think you know we achieved our dreams the second this became a full-time job it doesn't necessarily have to mean awards and success and tour buses and parties all the time it's like we get to go up on stage and play to fans and play our music and i think for me the most exciting part of the job is being in this studio being locked away for like 10 hours a day and coming up with ideas together and i, I think that to me is success is just loving what you do and making sure that you can make a living off of it whether or not it's it doesn't have to be loads of money as long as you can get by and keep doing it for the rest of your life and with your best friends then that's enough yeah um obviously you've got the mother mother tour and then you've got like your prism show the jacaranda um after all this promo has done what i know it's a bit too soon to say but what's next are you just going to be like focusing on the album touring um, festivals I I think obviously we want to keep our options open for more support tours. We want to be supporting as many people as possible. And just now that this album's going to be out, we want to get it in front of new fans and new people and expand our sort of community of fans that we got. But I think we will, until we get more support tours booked and more tours or festivals booked, we will probably end up going straight back into recording the second album because now that it's out it's like all right we've been sat on all this material for three months now it's all out we need to come up with the next single do you know what i mean which is it, it's exciting for me because i love getting back to the um get, getting back in the studio but it just seems bizarre that we've just released this album but we will need to get back in the studio like asap but i'm looking forward to it yeah um, and finally if you could tell someone who's never heard of corals before who or who hasn't listened to the mess we seem to make what would you say to them to like persuade them to listen to this album? I'd probably focus on the fact that it goes from Tool-inspired bass lines 
to piano ballads to pop songs to sort of folky music and be like and tr- try and convince them that yeah that sounds like a bizarre neclectic mix of sounds but they we've made it work like trust me we've made it work just listen to the album and you'll understand yeah and if, do you want to like give a message to the fans on behalf of you and the rest of the band just before we wrap uh, up yeah of course cool. so we just want to thank everyone and not just the fans but everyone who's helped us create this album and we we, we wouldn't be here without them and it just blows our mind that we get to go across the world whether it's 1,500 people in Liverpool or 90 people in Paris or 500 people in Amsterdam, just being able to play any crowds to anyone across the world because this music has resonated with them just means the world to us. And just, we just can't thank them enough, really. All right. Well, thank you so much for giving me the time to chat to you about the album. No, um, thank you very much. It's all right. Congratulations again and have a nice time on the Mother Mother tour. Ah, thank you. Right. Cheers. Thank you. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.